The first question at 5.1.1 asks us to define a tertiary alcohol. Now, some of you watching this might not know what a primary, secondary, and a tertiary alcohol are. So let me show you that first. So here we have a drawing of a primary, secondary, and a tertiary alcohol. But let me explain. What you do is you find the OH, then you look at the carbon that it is bonded to. So that would be this carbon over here. Now, looking at that carbon, how many other carbons are there? touching that carbon. Well, all we can see is this one over here. So let me just write down these steps for you guys. So you say, look for the OH. Okay, that's step one. Step two, look for the carbon bonded to the OH. That was this one here. Step three, how many carbon are bonded to the carbon in number two. So the carbon that we found in number two was this one. Now how many carbons are bonded to that? Well there's only one. So because there's only one we will call this primary. Let's try the next one. So we look for the so we look for the OH. Here it is. Then what we do is we look for the carbon that is bonded to the OH. Here it is. Then we look and see how many carbons are bonded to that one. Well, there's one and two. So that means that because there is a two now, we call this secondary. And let's try the last one. We look for the OH. There it is. Look for the carbon that is bonded to it. And then look for the carbons that are bonded to that one. So there's one, two, three. And so that is called a tertiary alcohol because there are three carbons bonded to that carbon. Okay, so I hope that that clears that up for you. So then, a tertiary alcohol, if we want to define it, it is an alcohol in which the carbon bonded to the OH group, you can call it a hydroxyl group as well, is bonded to three co other carbons. Okay, it's an alcohol in which the carbon bonded to the OH group is bonded to three other carbons, like what we saw, like this. Okay, in 5.1.2 we need to write down the functional group of A. Now A is a tertiary alcohol. So an alcohol we know has this OH part. Now this OH part is called a hydroxyl. So you call it a hydroxyl group. Like that. The IUPAC name. Oh wow. So we need to try draw this thing out quickly. Remember it's a tertiary. So we would definitely start off like that. But now we only have four carbons, so we would add another one over there, for example. You could have added it on this side or up here. It wouldn't really matter. So now we must just put all these hydrogens in. And now we must name it. So we always name it closest to the functional group. So if the functional group is here, then you could name it on this left-hand side. And so how many carbons are there? There's one, two, three, four in the main chain. So that's going to be butte. Then we look at the branches. So if this is the main chain over here, then this part up here would be a branch. And so that is a one carbon branch, so that's methyl, and it's on carbon number two, because this is carbon number one, this is carbon number three, and this is carbon number four. So we can say two methyl, then we say butan, then on carbon, then we need to see what type of functional group we have. We've got an alcohol. So on carbon number two, we have an alcohol. And so the name of it would be like that. 2-methyl-butan-2-ol. It says find the structural formula of its isomer, its chain isomer. A chain isomer is when you have the chain that is different. So a chain isomer, the chain is different. 
So we need to try and make this molecule have the same amount of atoms but have a chain that is different. And so what I think we could do is we could, let's make the three carbon chain, let's do it like that. And then we don't have to keep it as a tertiary, so we can just put all of the carbons, you see there's five of them, two, three, four, five. Let's just put the, all of them in a straight row. No one said it has to be a tertiary. That's not what an isomer is. An isomer just has the same amount of each atom. And so there we go. Now, why is this a chain isomer? It's because the chain is different. Here we have a chain that is with four carbons. Here we have a chain with five carbons. Okay, and so that is why we can call these chain isomers. Moving on to question 5.2.1, write down the following for compound B, the structural formula of its functional group. So we first need to know what this is because they don't tell us that B is an alcohol or anything like that. So we've got to try to figure that out. So we know that it's, so the way I like to figure it out is I just draw it out. So we've got a CH3, a CH2, a C, then there's an oxygen. So some of you might be tempted to put the oxygen there. But I'll quickly show you why that's not correct. So remember what I'm doing now is incorrect. So we don't, st in grade 12, we do not have any molecules that have an oxygen randomly in the middle like that. Yes, we have an ester, but if it's an ester, then you would have something more like this. You would have the double bond oxygen as well. So, th so we don't get a molecule like this in grade uh, 12. So that oxygen that they are giving you there is going to be a double bonded oxygen because we've we've got molecules like that in grade 12. We know aldehydes, ketones. So if you know your organic molecules very well, you would know that this is a ketone. Some of you might have said aldehyde, but with an aldehyde, you would have wanted this to be on the side. Remember aldehydes always on the side, so it would have looked more like this. See, it would have been on the side of the molecule. But because it's not on the side, this is a ketone. But they're saying, write down the structural formula of its functional group. So the structural formula would be um, the C, double bond oxygen, but then you must also show the two carbons next to it, like that. Because a ketone always has to be somewhere in the middle. So by putting these two carbons here, we are confirming that it is in the middle. Because if you only did this and you went like that, then what you are saying is that these areas can be anything. And so if you say this could be a hydrogen, for example, then it's an aldehyde. So to show that it's a ketone, you have to show these carbons to show that it's somewhere in the middle of the molecule. The next question, 5.2.2, says the IUPAC name of its straight chain functional isomer. Ah, functional. A functional isomer is an isomer, but it's a totally different functional group. Now, in grade 12, we have nine different functional groups. Homologous series like alkane, alkene, alcohol, aldehyde, ketones, esters, carboxylic acids, all of these different things. Now, they would like us to find a functional isomer. So it, has, it can't be a ketone because this is a ketone. So what other molecule is very similar to this, but it's not a ketone? Well, that would be an aldehyde. So they just want the name, but let me draw it out so we can understand what the aldehyde would look like. Remember, an aldehyde, the double bond oxygen is always on the side. And so there we go. So this is what the aldehyde would look like. Now to name an aldehyde, you just look at the number of carbons, which is four. So that's butan. And then the name of an aldehyde just ends with these letters over here. Whoops, let me show you that again. It just ends with these letters here. So that's AL. So it's going to be butanol like that. Some students might say, Kevin, don't we have to maybe put a one here and go like that? No, you don't. Because an aldehyde always has this part here on the, on the carbon number one. So you don't have to show that. So you can just say butanol like that. 
write down the following for compound C. So for 5.3.1, write down its general formula. Now general formulas are things like CnH2n plus 2, CnH2n. Those are the types of things that they're talking about. So we first need to know what type of molecule is this. So you might be brilliant at this, but I'm not. I like to draw it out first. So I draw it out. So CH3. You don't always have to put the hydrogens. That's a bit of a waste of time. Then you've got a carbon where they said that there is a hydrogen bonded to it. And then there's also this thing bonded to it. So there's a CH2. There we go. And then a CH3 on the same area. There we go. So that's that part. Then we carry on. So there's a carbon. And then there's another carbon. And then there's a hydrogen. So we have a bit of a problem here. Because this carbon and this carbon are not saturated. You can't just go put hydrogens here. The reason is, is that they showed you that there weren't any hydrogens there. So what we do is we fix that up using double bonds and, sing and triple bonds. Let's see what a double bond does. Because if we have a double bond, that still doesn't fix it because these two carbons still only have three bonds. Can you see it? One, two, and three. So all we do we don't stress, we just put a triple bond. And so look at that, guys. By drawing it out, I was nearly tempted to think that this was an alkane. But by drawing it out, we see that it's actually an alkyne. Now, alkynes, which are the triple bonds, you should know that their general formula is CnH2n minus 2. That is the general formula of an alkyne. And now, the IUPAC name. Last question, guys. So with the IUPAC name, there's always three parts that we need to look at. The easy part is this middle piece. You need to see what is the longest chain that you can make. Now, if you just go straight, that's only going to make four. Can you see that? There's only four carbons. But what if we go this way? Then all of a sudden, we, have able, we are able to make a carbon chain with five carbons. Okay, so that's great. Now we should know that 5 means pent. Okay? Then what we do is we look at the number of branches. So if this part here is your chain, then where are the branches? Well, the branches is all the other things that are sticking out, such as this. So there's one branch over there with one carbon, so that's a methyl. Now, on which carbon is that? Well, it depends. If we start naming over here, then that will be carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3. If we start naming over here, then it'll be carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3. So it actually doesn't matter. Um, it's it's going to be on carbon 3 for both of them. There is the correct way to do it, but for this part, whether you did this right or wrong, you're still going to get this correct because it's on carbon number 3. So what we do is we say that on carbon number 3, there is a methyl group. Okay, now the last part is this little piece here, which is the, the functional group, or the, the, the what is it, okay? So let's have a look. We know that this is a triple bond, which is an alkyne. So we would say that on carbon number, oh, now by the way, you can't name this molecule from here, down here, because you can't do it this way. The rule is, rule, Always name closest to functional group. So we should actually name it from the carbon with the triple bond. So it'll be here, 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 and here. So on carbon number one, there is a alkyne. And so we say Y-N-E. And that is how you would name that molecule.